Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about ball python euthanasia, which is quite a morbid topic, but needs to be addressed all the same. <laughs> um, this guy who's wrestling me is Bobby, my oldest ball python, so don't worry, Bobby is not going to be euthanized, he's 100% healthy. But basically, for this video I wanted to talk about a snake that I had to get euthanized maybe um, two or three weeks ago now. Um, it was a snake that I'd hatched myself, raised myself, she was a really beautiful hatchling and her name was Worm. So obviously she got the nickname Worm because she didn't grow too well <laughs> as you might imagine. Um, but Worm was a acid spider I believe. Yeah just acid spider hatchling. Um, so she hatched out. Um, as you can see from like the thumbnail and other photos I've got of her she was a, a lovely healthy looking baby. Um, nothing abnormal on the outside, she behaved normally, she moved normally, um, but quite quickly I noticed she wouldn't eat on her own, so I went through the process of assist feeding her, as you do with some hatchlings, and I guess kind of the maximum amount of time um, that you'd expect to assist feed a hatchling could be sometimes six weeks if it's a really stubborn one, um, but Worm went way past uh, the six week mark, and I think she went to about six months assist feeding. Um, at the same time, she was regularly getting blockages in her bowel, she was getting impacted um, with stools. There was no obvious reason for her to be impacted. She didn't have hard belly or anything like this. It was literally, I'd, I'd give her a bath, get her to go to the bathroom. Uh, two weeks later, she'd be impacted again. So, in total, I took her to, I think in the end it was two different, vet, two different vets. I couldn't remember if I saw a third one, but definitely I saw two vets for her. Um, the first vet said that her stomach was in the wrong place, which is, you know, would be a problem for any animal. Um, and the second vet said that they suspected she had a stricture, which is a, a tightening in the intestine, in the intestinal wall somewhere down the, down the body. And, and obviously that's something that on a snake Bobby's size, you might attempt surgery, but on a, on a young snake or a hatchling, it's not really going to work. Um, so I spoke to one of the vets who said that if she was acting like a snake, if I could get her to feed on her own and, you know, have normal snaky behaviours, um, if that makes any sense, then it wouldn't be cruel um, to try and keep her going and try and see how she develops as she grows. So for about two years, I, well, first of all, after about six months, she stopped assist feeding. She started striking on her own and she started acting like a snake. I wanted her to. She was hiding in a cave. She was striking. She was hunting. She was climbing. She was, you know acting 100% in terms of behavior, but she was still getting the intestinal blockages, the impaction, and, um, and I still had to give her a bath every sort of two to three weeks um, and give her vibration therapy with a toothbrush, um, an electric toothbrush along the abdomen to try and break up the stool. And that kind of worked for about two years. And then literally maybe just two months ago, I guess it would be two months ago, she stopped responding to those baths. I couldn't move anything along. She stopped taking in nutrients properly. She started to show signs of malnutrition. She was losing fat along the sides of her head and the flanks of her body. And uh, she also started vomiting. Uh, and I, I took her to one of the vets again and he said, look, um, you know, I, I, I had already decided that it was probably time to have her euthanized. Uh, I took her to the vets and he said, look, you know, you, you're never going to win this one. You did your best. And she had a good quality of life for the better part of two years. Um, and yeah, we did have her put to sleep um, on the spot there. Um, so my experience is that she went very, very quickly. It was very upsetting. Um, it is upsetting any time, you know, no matter how hard an exterior you have, it's always upsetting if you've spent a lot of time with an animal to put it to sleep. Um, but she was gone in a few seconds and it, and it was honestly the most humane thing to do, I think, at the time, the most humane way to deal with it. So that's my experience, which isn't a very good one. Um, but quickly, I wanted to go over the different methods that exist for euthanizing snakes and cover quickly what's, what people say about them and, and what the general consensus is of them. So, the first method, which was used for a lot of animals for a long time, and has been completely kind of morally outlawed in the reptile community, is cooling and freezing. So cooling and freezing is bad. Now, the reason 
for which cooling and freezing is bad is not the same reason for which people say it is. What people say about cooling and freezing is not always strictly true. It's only true for large animals. So people will tell you, don't ever cool and freeze an animal um, because the process involves putting them in the fridge until they go into a state of torpor and then putting them into a freezer and people say the animal will be able to feel ice crystals forming in its body because the body will freeze before the brain. Um, now for a large animal, probably even an animal um, Bobby's size and up, um, that is true. They would be able to feel the ice crystals forming before their brain shut down. What well, is possibly true. There's a, there's a chance it's true. They would be in a state of torpor, so whether they'd be conscious or not is, is debatable. But it's possibly true that that could be a horrendously cruel way to kill an animal. Now, what isn't true is that it would do this in small animals like frogs, toads, or very small hatchling snakes, say like hatchling corn snakes, etc. Um, because the, the deferential in temperature between the extremities or the outside of the body and the brain would have to be high enough for it to for the outside to, to lower itself to freezing temperature much more before the brain. So that all depends on volume to surface area ratio. A very tiny animal, like a little frog or something, has a very low volume, air, volume to surface area ratio, and that means it, the whole thing would freeze very quickly. So there wouldn't be this differential where it can spend a long time feeling ice crystals in its distant extremities, you know like like a you know a big lizard or a long snake feeling its tail freeze for example that that wouldn't be possible in a very small animal so people aren't exactly 100 percent correct on the cooling and freezing thing um purely because a lot of people haven't studied physics or anything like that um but everyone's got an opinion <laughs> the reason that cooling and freezing is bad is because it isn't instant or even close to instant so anything more than a few seconds is not good. That's too long for an animal to spend dying. You know, it, it might know it's dying. It might, you know, be freezing for however long. It's just, it's not a nice way to go. And, it, and this is the whole point of euthanasia is to do something humane. So whatever method you choose, um, you're going to have to choose one that you're comfortable. It's fast. It's going to be as fast as possible. So as on the same kind of tangent of slow horrible ways to die <laughs> um, another common method that people often discuss is gas and um, because a popular method for killing rodents here or euthanizing them for food here is with um, I think co2 gas or or dry ice basically um, because rodents have a very high metabolic rate um, they breathe a lot of oxygen in proportion to their size um, and they will fall asleep and die very, very, very quickly, um, literally within a few minutes, I think, at the most, if you gas them. Um, Bobby, for example, it might take him several hours because uh, reptiles have a very much slower metabolic rate and they have a much lower resting oxygen need, if you like. So um, it would take a long time to kill a snake by gassing it with CO2 or any other kind of gas, nitrogen or whatever. Um, so that's not a viable option. Again, that would be a long time for an animal to be dying, and that would come under the brackets of cruelty. Just like cooling and freezing is probably cruel to a, an animal Bobby's size, um, even though the science there isn't exact. Um, it's important to remember that these guidelines that we get with these kind of things are, are done by people doing their best, trying to prevent cruelty. And the, the, the fastest, least cruel methods are are not the ones I've just been talking about. So, up next, a method a lot of people have suggested to me, even for worm, was the hammer. Smashing the snake's head in with a hammer as quickly as you can. And, you know, just before we go any further, please do check on the laws where you live, because um, snake owners frequently get bad, bad press and, uh, you know, we're not in everyone's good books, so I'd be careful with this kind of thing. But people say, well, just whack it on the head with a hammer. One blow, it's done. Um, that, that's great. If you've got crap aim like me and you're uncoordinated and clumsy, the chances are that you could actually miss slightly, not get all of the brain, um, get the top of the head or the face. Remember that Bobby's brain is here. It is not here or up here. So anywhere else on the head, you could just get, give a horrible injury and the snake could be alive. So if you're not confident... That's a really, it's a dodgy way to go. If you're very, very confident, maybe you could do it. Maybe you're a big breeder and you've got lots of snakes and you've got to deal with this every single day. You'd be in a different scenario than me and I hope you've got a harder stomach than me as well for this kind of thing. Um, 
but me I don't like that method I don't think it's a good idea particularly if it's just a one-off um, and, and personally I, I find there's something kind of dehumanizing even though we're talking about a reptile the word that comes to mind is dehumanizing um, about smashing your pet over the head with a hammer um, I mean it just doesn't sit well with me I don't like it and that's my, my personal opinion so the final one the option I chose is going to the vets this does sound upsetting because it's an injection in the heart but remember there is no bone above the heart in a in a python it's probably it's probably about right here in bobby um or maybe here yeah it's there's no bone covering the heart in a python it is just a quick injection in if the vet is experienced and they know what they're doing this injection will take a few seconds to kill the animal and when we did it to worm there was no you know thrashing around etc it was a very quick very peaceful way to go uh, and for me that was the most humane option that i had found and considered um, and that was what i went with and it cost me in british pounds 30 pounds i guess maybe that's maybe 37 dollars us um so it's not you know it's not a huge fee but i can see how for a big breeder you might need to come up with a, a different solution unfortunately but the vet for me if it's a one-off or you know only an occasional thing the vet really is the best option that's just my my personal opinion um but there you go <laughs> so if you are facing a problem like this i hope this has given you something to think about now there is one more method which i'll probably cover quickly which is pithing and this this is similar to the hammer but it's where you use a poultry bolt or a cattle bolt or any bolt gun basically uh, which fires a rod fires it about an inch out or two inches out depending on the bolt gun and you fire it directly into the brain of the animal and that apparently is instant but you need to know the anatomy perfectly you need to get it directly on the brain and you need to do it correctly just like the hammer it probably is easier and this is the method that's been recommended for use in Florida to kill off the iguanas and stuff like that. So animal rights, animal welfare charities and, and scientists have broadly said that this is the least cruel method for euthanasia. But again, they're, they're talking about the best scenario they can come up with. They're doing their best to come up with a situation that involves killing a lot of animals and a lot of wild animals. So in a captive setting, individual owners like us, I still think the vet is the best option. So I hope this hasn't <laughs> made you too sad thinking about Worm and, and what she went through. Um, but honestly, with animals, if you keep them long enough, it's going to happen. It is upsetting. It's not nice, but you do need to um, make the responsible decision to do what's best for the animal at the time. So I hope, yeah, like I say, I hope you found this <laughs> educational at least. But as always, please do like and subscribe and please do comment, get in touch. If there's anything else you want to know or you need help, please let me know. Thank you very much.